Uh, good to see everyone uh, again today. First of all, before I start, just wanted to uh, send our prayers to everyone up in Maryland affected by that uh, bridge collapse. What an awful situation and tragedy. As you guys know, we have a lot of players on our team from that area, D.C., Northern Virginia, Maryland, uh, Delaware as well that are in that region. So as of 7.30 this morning in our team meeting, don't think anybody was uh, directly affected by that, but certainly uh, hits close to home for all those guys being from that area. And um, um, thinking of everyone up there, uh, I want to thank all the high school coaches that were here last weekend for our high school coaches clinic. Had an awesome uh, two days. Appreciate Scott Abel, the head football coach at Davidson uh, College, for uh, coming down and speaking on Friday morning. Uh, what an amazing night on Friday night with uh, Houston Nutt and Mark Rick. They were beyond uh, exceptional. And uh, I know our coaches, myself, and, and all the high school coaches really appreciated them. And then Gus Bradley, the defensive coordinator at Indianapolis Colts, and someone that I have a lot of admiration for going back to his time as the defensive coordinator with the Seahawks and then head coach of the Jaguars, did an awesome job on Saturday morning as well. So really enjoyed visiting with all the visiting college and pro coaches and then all the high school coaches that came out as well. Some great fellowship with them. Want to wish Coach Staley good luck this weekend up in uh, Albany. Got a chance to get over there on Sunday and holy smokes uh, watching them play on Sunday. So hopefully they can keep that um, uh, level of uh, uh, consistency up and continue to get better, but we'll be pulling for them this weekend. Also been a good first week for us. Just finished practice four. Saturday was our first day in full pads. Uh, today was our first day back since Saturday. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of energy, a lot of excitement out there, a lot of new faces, uh, whether it be transfers, freshmen. Uh, so a lot of newness, but really, really excited about those new guys along with uh, so many of the returning players that have played a lot of football here, uh, Luke Doty and Brashawn Lee and Ja'Kai Moore and, and Boogie Huntley and Tonka Hemingway and Debo. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, lot of guys that have been here for a long time as well that are back. So really, really a uh, good start. Got a lot of work to do, obviously. Uh, practice today, like I said. Uh, we'll meet, lift, have our normal day off, our day between practice schedule tomorrow. We'll practice on Thursday, and then our guys will have the weekend off for Easter. So we'll finish up on Thursday, and then those guys will be able to uh, get away for Easter if they want to, and then we'll be right back at it next week for week three. So I'm pleased with where we are right now, and a lot of work to do, but continuing to try and get better. Questions? Shane, any more additions, subtractions from the injury list? I know that Hughes and Swigert might have missed a couple days last week. Yeah, they were, they've been out. Um, uh, also, you might have, we might have to catch you up from your press conference you missed last week when you were traveling to Pittsburgh as well. I think I hit those guys. If I didn't, I apologize. But those guys will be out. Uh, haven't, they haven't gotten back yet. Like I said, hopeful that they still will. Uh, really, the only new addition, David, would be uh, Juju McDowell. He'll probably – not probably. He will be done um, for the spring. It's nothing um, – Long term, it was something, a collarbone that's been bothering him a little bit that he fell on, not in a contact drill, but diving for a ball to catch a pass and uh, kind of came down on the wrong way. And it was a situation where we said, do we want to continue to have this thing nag him and, and be an issue or do we want to go ahead and, and get it fixed? And we, he and all of us agreed, let's just go ahead and get it fixed where it's not an issue going forward. So he will, uh, um, he'll have a procedure done to get that mended up and uh, he's not excited about it, but that's what he wants to do. And uh, he'll be good to go uh, here shortly. Won't be able to do anything else the rest of practice, but uh, he's a guy. He's played a lot of football around here, and we, uh, we know what he can do. Shane, I know it's early, and a lot of people will be interested about the quarterback position, not saying there's a, not competition at other positions, but being able to have a guy like Robbie with the experience that he has along with, obviously, with what Sellers got to experience last year, and I know there's some other quarterbacks in there. What have you noticed just through the first couple practices, especially with growth with Sellers and just maybe just trying to add that experience to the portal this offseason? Yeah, I think, first of all, there's just great competition uh, in that room because you've got a bunch of guys that are all competing, and uh, they all believe they can be and should be the quarterback here at South Carolina. So there's great competition, first of all, which I love. And then I think there's just a uh, – there's an experience and a maturity aspect with those guys. 
Uh, you know, we may have a lot of new faces around here, not just in the quarterback room, but all across the board. We may had a lot. We may have lost a lot of production here at Carolina, but we replaced it with a lot of production from other schools. Now they may not have had that production. Um, uh, here at Carolina, but those receivers that we've brought in, like Jared and Gage and Amari, like they taught, they caught a bunch of balls at the college they're coming from. And DeAndre Jules had a lot of production, and Jawarn Howe and Oscar Attaway, they had Rocket Sanders. Yeah, we lost some production, but we've replaced it with a lot of production as well. And I say that because it's the same situation in the in the quarterback room as well. Those guys have have played at this level. Robbie has started games in this conference. Uh, now that Oklahoma and Texas are in the SEC, uh, Davis Bevel has started a game, an SEC team now versus an SEC team now. Uh, and when you play quarterback in that OU Texas game, that game is wowzers when you talk about just electricity and intensity. So uh, they're not like freshmen out of high school. It's new for them because they're learning a new system and how we do things and things like that. But it's not a situation where, you know, the bullets are flying out there and, and they don't know how to respond. They've been in those situations before, which is great. And then that helps Lenoris as well, just having those guys to compete with him. And, and Lenoris, I'm really pleased with the progress he's made because there is no – you know, Spencer in that room anymore. There's Luke, who obviously has played a lot of football and somebody he can lean on, but, you know, he can't rely on Spencer. And, and Lenoris, really since January, Mike has been great just as far as taking a leadership role vocally and, and continuing to uh, try and do the things that you need your quarterback to do. Shane, some of the guys, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Shane, some of the guys in here yesterday were kind of talking about, you know, what to expect from the offense and you guys are going to try to be explosive, have some more downhill runs and stuff. Just want to get your take on what fans and people can expect uh, from the offense from your perspective. Yeah, that's one thing that uh, we count explosive plays as a run over 12 yards and a pass over 18 yards. And same thing on defensively, if you – are giving up 12 yard runs and 18 yard passes or more, that's giving up explosives. And, and, you know, if you look at our record, the way that we keep it, I think we're something like 16 and two in our three years here if we just win the explosive play battle each week. And that's not rocket science. Every team in America probably is doing the same thing. If you have a lot of big plays, your chances of winning are going to go up. But it's something that we've emphasized, always have. And uh, really have emphasized to our players about being explosive offensively and then not giving up explosives defensively, which we did too many times at, at times last year. Um, so, yeah, we want to be explosive. But as always, it's it's we want to be balanced. Well, what does that mean? It's, to me, it's not 50-50. It's the ability to run the ball when you need to run it and the ability to throw it when you need to throw it. Um, protecting the football. We were better last year at uh, protecting the football offensively, but still not where we – you know, want to be. We were dead last. My first two years here, we, we were better, a lot better last season, but we certainly can continue to improve that. And then beyond that, it just gets into, uh, let's figure out who our best players are and figure out how we're going to get them on the field and, and get on the ball. And uh, we're, we're deeper at running back. Yes, we lost a lot of production at uh, at wide receiver with Zay being gone, but we, we, we have more depth in that room. I think we have more depth in the tight end room. So it's, eager, it's, it's exciting to watch those guys get out there and compete. And let's figure out you know, who our best guys are and how we get them the ball and, and, um, and not try and say, this is our offense. We, you have to adapt to what we want to do. We want to be multiple enough where we can adapt to, to our personnel. Hey, Shane, can you kind of uh, give an update of what you've seen in the competition in the, the cornerback room and, and how that's been playing out through? I know it's only four practices, but what you're liking from those guys? Yeah, um, another one where there's it's, it's neat watching that, <clears throat> that battle in there. Obviously, you got guys like Judge Collier who started a couple games for us last year. He, he is long and, and athletic and, and has – work to get stronger as well. So he's one, someone that started a couple games last season and, and has some experience. Um, you know, David Spalding's working quite a bit out there right now. David kind of does everything, safety, nickel, corner. But he's been out there. You talk about uh, Vakari Swain, who's out there as well. Um, Jalua Solomon comes in this summer. We'll throw him into the mix out there as well. And then, you know, O'Donnell's 
kind of on that other side right now, and he's competing with all of them, but all those guys are battling out to figure out who's on the other side. But they're all mixing it in there. Um, you know, I know you guys think I'm full of it when I say there's no, like, real depth chart. Now we have, okay, you're the first group today, but it might be whenever the next media availability is, you'll be out there and see, okay, here's the starting 11 on offense and defense. Well, it is for that period. And then maybe the next time we do a team period, it's a different corner out there taking work with getting work with the ones. And, and then the thing that's helping us too right now, Jordan, is just the fact that um, because we have pretty much our entire team here right now, except for three scholarship freshmen and some walk-ons that we'll get here in the summertime, we're able to uh, set up these practices just like we do in August, meaning that we're, we're, everyone's getting reps. When we're doing a team period, most of the time, we have an 11-on-11 11 11 group going on on one field, and then we have 11-on-11 11 11 going on on a separate field. So everybody is, is getting reps. So because of that, you know, it might be, okay, Vakari, you're on this field today, this period, next period, you're over here on the other field. Emery, you're over here this period, next period, you're over there. And uh, they're all getting a ton of work, and then we're able to get in there and evaluate the tape and go from there. So it's uh, pleased with the progress. They've, they've, I've seen them make a lot of plays. And uh, got to continue to and just show that consistency and details to to, to uh, do what we need them to do. Back to back. <laughs> wow. Can you, what I think there's a lot of people who look at the uh, the wide receivers and it's it's Nick who's just a, a freak of nature and then you know a lot of guys who are you know not six feet tall you know 220 pounds or whatever but you know Gage was in here yesterday and saying hey we can catch the deep ball, we can, you know, do bubble screens. We have so much versatility. What do you like from those guys right now? And is that a position that you might address in the transfer portal? Or are you feeling good about what you've seen out of those guys through four practices? Yeah, I think with every single position that we have, we're always looking to increase the depth in the competition. Um, so I wouldn't say there's any position that we look at and say we absolutely wouldn't take somebody if there was somebody out there that fit us and, and had a chance to make us better. Um, I like that. I like that group. No, they're not. They're not Xavier Leggett and and big from that standpoint. They all don't look like uh, Nick Harbor. So in some ways, that's a little concerning because in today's time, you need big bodies out there on the perimeter. And and uh, when you have those, you know, fifty fifty balls, meaning you and the you and the DB are there and having a chance to make a play, a competitive catch. You got the size to get out there and win those battles, without a doubt. Um, but having said that, there's also a benefit to those guys as well. I mean, we've played. There have been some, you know, championship teams that have won championships in this league and nationally that they didn't have overly big receivers. I mean, I saw Devonte Smith when I was at Georgia catch a touchdown pass to beat us in the national championship game. He's not a very big guy, but he's got a great skill set. And I think that's what these guys bring to the table. They can they can catch a ball. Uh, I think it was Gage today, caught a little screen, basically the same play we were through to uh, on the th third down against Clemson two years ago up there, essentially the same type screen. And Gage caught that ball and made one guy miss, and he's out of there for a touchdown. You know, So a lot of that ability um, – Jitterbug isn't the word but that I'm looking for, but y'all know what I mean. Shifty, tough to tackle um, as well once you get the ball in their hands. So we'll be creative with our personnel and, and, um, and, and continuing to find ways to best utilize those guys. And then when you have a deep tight end group that's athletic like we have as well, that makes up for maybe a lack of size that you have out there at the receiver position also. Shane, there's a lot of excitement with those running backs that have come in via the transfer portal, and rightfully so. But I feel like DJ Braswell kind of gets lost in the mix a little bit, especially after what he was able to do for you guys, stepping up, playing more, yeah. more than four games last year towards the end of the season. What have you seen from him, not just this early into spring, but just his growth, maybe size and everything from the off-season weightlifting program. Yeah, uh, he came in as a true freshman and did some things. Y'all heard me talk about it. The game-winning touchdown pass against Kentucky was – made possible because of a great blitz pickup that he made where he had to come across the formation and pick up a linebacker or a, a guy coming on the pressure, which is big for a, um, 
for any running back to do, but especially a true freshman. I think with DJ, it was very much, you know, we tell our, I told the running backs <clears throat> back in January that, look, yeah, we brought in three transfer running backs, talking to Juju and DJ and all those returning guys, and that's not necessarily a knock on you, but that is a opportunity. One, we showed last year with all the injuries we had at running back that you need more than three scholarship running backs. I told you guys before, I was at Virginia Tech and we lost four in one season. Uh, back in 2014 or 15 and uh, 14. Uh, so we want to increase the depth, but also it's time for DJ or whoever else to, to step up as well. And I think he took that to heart that, okay, you brought in three running backs. I'm going to work. And he's got a ways to go, but he worked in the weight room. He's He can run. There's no question about it. He continues to get stronger. And then being able to do all the things that – we want our running backs to do. It's not just running the ball. It's all the other stuff, protections, passing game, all uh, and special teams. And uh, he's continuing to get better. So that's a, another great room with competition. Love what Oscar brings to the table. Love what Rocket brings to the table. Really excited about Jawarn Howe. And then to go along with Juju and DJ and Bradley Dunn and Chase McCracken, Nathan harris Inc. and some of the other running backs that we have here in the program, it's a good group. Coach, I know it's still early in spring ball, but freshmen tend to play a lot on your on your defense, just finding their way through the rubble. Um, last week, you were talking about your linebackers and Wendell Gregory and, and uh, Fred J.R. Johnson. Yeah. Are there any freshmen that you can give me just at this point? I know, again, like I said, it's still early, but any guys that you could see that could potentially break through? Uh, yeah. Um, it's hard not to notice those guys um, all across the board when you talk about the three freshmen on the offensive line, Josiah, Cam, and Blake, you know, they're going to be really good players. Um, you know, when you look at those receivers, Mazio Bennett and, and DeBron Gatlin, really excited about some of the things that they continue uh, to do. Obviously, uh, Dylan Stewart is as advertised and has really been impressive in four days as well. Fred and Wendell, really, really uh, excited about, you know, so all of them, can I say that and then take the easy way out? But no, I think with all these guys, I mean, we're trying to, there's no one, I'll say this through four practices where we've said, okay, man, he's probably a year away. Um, not really going to be able to count on him in our minds. We've got a long way till he played, but let's try and get them all ready to play. And none of them have given us any reason to think that, that they can't, um, from, uh, either they, it's a good group and, and, um, you know, whether it be special teams, whether it be offense, whether it be defense, let's find a role for them and get them out there and, and get them going. But we're definitely, it's a, it's a uh, athletic group. You know, we are absolutely, you mentioned Fred and Wendell specifically, we are absolutely um, more athletic at linebacker. And that's a, not, a knock on anybody that's not here, the two guys that, that left. But these guys, when you talk about the two true freshmen and you talk about uh, Bengali Kamara and Demetrius Knight, those are two really, really, really good players um, that were very productive at their previous schools and two really, really talented freshmen that are long and athletic and, and what you want from a size standpoint. Nothing, Phil? Nothing? Oh, man. All right. Well, we can write a note. We'll get it up here and answer it. Good? All right. Thank you all. Have a good week.